Okay, and away we go. So, hello everyone. My name is Melanie Kaur, and um, I want to talk to you briefly about um, just different communication tools we use in the Pulp community. Um, I'm hoping that this is fast, so because I have I have a feeling that a lot of people have um, might have feelings to share with me, and I'm primarily interested in hearing them rather than um, rather than going any into any great depth about any particular tool. Uh, so, first of all, just like to start from the beginning, why do we need these tools? Um, like any group, any community, for the most part, needs both synchronous and asynchronous me methods of communication. So, like a synchronous method of communication is some kind of chat tool. Ideally, we use some form of centralized chat tool, ideally open source, um, you know, non proprietary non-creepy tool uh, and in terms of asynchronous communication this is maybe for um for place for people who are outside of our time zones um so that we can catch up with them um for for example for planning uh, for release announcements, for design discussions, for kind of more long form things that people might need to take time to respond to. We Ideally, we have asynchronous forms of communication as well. And for example, this PulpCon, for the most part, it was all organized on a mixture between our discourse, our community discourse, uh, which you know I would class as asynchronous, um, HackMD, and also um, a little bit of chasing around on uh, matrix. So uh, this is why we need these tools. Uh, so, but then, yeah, as uh, Matthias mentioned yesterday to me, um, something did change this year. So for many years, we just were on Freenode and a mailing list. And then, like, quite literally, in a very short amount of time, we we changed our both our main communication methods. So just going to talk briefly about what happened, and perhaps we'll discuss what we need to do next. So in terms of synchronous communication, for, for many, many years, we were on Freenode. And then, um, you know, we didn't really plan to move off of Freenode. This time last year at our previous PulpCon, we discussed in general about centralizing around Matrix. Some people really like Matrix. Um, other people are committed to their IRC experience. But something happened that kind of pushed us all generally all open source projects out of Freenode. And um, we moved quite quickly onto Matrix with a Libra chat backup. So in my opinion, like Matrix is a protocol. And whatever would happen to us in the future from a communications perspective, like if there's some kind of takeover of Libra or there's something, something weird happens, or all the cool kids in the repo management space, if they move off of, um, if they move off into, for example, Telegram or some other cool thing, we can we can remain kind of operating as we are now and bridge there, so we we can remain centralized in our discussion, our synchronous discussion points. And um, so I think that is a huge advantage to the change that we've made. It also has a range of capabilities. Like at the moment I am um, live streaming as, uh, and you know, there's at least a few people that have joined us in the last two days. Um, we're just providing other ways of interacting. We can also just like run full conferences on that if we want. It has many, many different options that seem to grow. We don't have to use them all, but they're all there, which is kind of nice. Um, we have a bridge to LibreChat, so people who are committed to using IRC don't necessarily have to leave IRC. And um, it seems, to be honest, it really there were there were bugs with this, but it has seemed like a priority for both the Matrix people and also the Libra people to, how shall we say, um, a priority to to get that right. And I think we're seeing less and less problems. Um, the one positive thing about what happened this year is that we we don't seem to really have lost anyone. Like there's no voices that disappeared. The numbers in the rooms haven't really changed so much. So I think like we actually we didn't do too badly out of this. And you know I I remember talking last year a lot about how we could make things busier. And I do think that we actually are at a place now in our pulp room where there are there are people there are new names popping up. There is usually one or two discussions a day going on there. So it's actually, you know, I think better than this time last year, in my opinion. 
So then in terms of asynchronous communication, uh, for many, many years, again, like IRC predating even like when I joined, mailing lists were there. Um, the mailing list culture is um, proper old school hacker kind of thing. I was just reading on Twitter this morning that like a lot of this was just kind of eaten up by web 2.0. Um, for many people on the outside, like especially outside of Red Hat and maybe of a certain age category, like, like a younger age category, this this mode is appears outdated. And it also like I have feedback from community members that say it it that uh, to twinned with IRC kind of gives this impression of um, a close, a more closed community, a more old school community. Um, other words were used as well, but you get you get the vibe. And I don't think that that's reflective of what people can expect from Pulp, if I'm honest. Um, uh, from what I can see, anytime anyone reports anything or says we're doing anything, um, you know, suboptimally, you're only delighted to hear it. So. I don't think mailing lists, um, you know, I think there's a perception issue with this. And um, also in terms of, I spend a lot of time digging around the archive for different things that I would be writing. And it's it's a pain, it's actually just like a pain. And we talked last year about how it was a pain to find as well. Like, um, I'm just having a look, okay. You can shout out to me as well um, as I go along, um, and also like a user, you know, the entry, the end, the barrier of entry to the community means that somebody has to bloody subscribe to the mailing list to ask one question. That's quite high. Like you mightn't want to make a commitment like that, so you might just walk away. Um, and also, we have seen that this captcha service that's required to join our old mailing list is banned in China. So we're excluding like one billion people, you know, who might want to use pulp um, and also there's a poor search engine performance so previous discussions are lost largely and are difficult to navigate to I, I any of us that are working within it for a very long time are fine with it but that's not the that's not the relationship most people will have with with our mailing list so first of all we tried we did an evaluation and we looked at github discussions it was new at the time and um you know it was new we all had github accounts so it lowers the barrier just say of entry and most people working in open source uh, software have a github account so that's kind of you know it's nice um the first thing we kind of noticed um was that like the minute that that was opened more people were replying people are comfortable commenting on stuff there's just say emojis there's like thumbs up on things there's some kind of feedback in a more modern way and um that was an that that was apparent almost immediately and kind of indicated that we did need to make a change away from mailing lists but then the way it's designed it's like on a per repo basis rather than like a per organization basis so we can't have like github.com slash pulp slash discussions you know we'd have we had to pick a repo so then we had to rely on community members who just say don't know their way around as well as we do um clicking either a link from our website or going like four links deep to find what we need or find find us to talk to us and I, I, that's suboptimal in my opinion then another issue that, that i think tanya was the first one to quite quickly um kind of raise alarm bells about was that you know it's very hard to keep up with things because we're already inundated with github notifications like i myself who do a lot less in github than you guys i'm inundated from the few repos where i am active and um like how can you keep up to date with things if it's um if if it's just buried the this you know replies etc are buried in github notifications um and then the final kind of nail in the coffin for github discussions was uh, i think it was neil, neil gumpa who mentioned that like and this is a very common practice just say within the foreman community so like within foreman for example you might have people with very stable installations of foreman but they're they want to keep up to date with just say announcements and things so they'll subscribe on our discourse to like release announcements and they'll filter out Catello because they only want like a vanilla foreman and they'll get it they'll then be able to have like an email subscription that just goes to them and they get the latest information about um, foreman release candidates things like this and so there's a there's lots of people that might be using pulp but just mightn't be interacting with us on a daily basis and for them to keep up to date with things 
um, GitHub discussions just really wasn't the place that would substitute mailing lists in terms of um, announcing things. So we kind of, we just stopped that. And at the moment, we have our own instance of discourse, and it has, a, in my opinion, a beautiful modern interface. Um, it has easy filtering and search capabilities, so like older discussions can be easily retrieved and linked to within a, a current discussion. Um, for me, I have been an admin in the forum community uh, discourse for 18 months, and I found it really, really nice to I found it really, really nice that I can see trends. And some of these trends tack perfectly with discussions going on in the wider open source world. Like I could see lots and lots of changes in what people like hot topics, for example, when the CentOS stream thing was discussed. And also like the, the things people were looking for on this course, for example, led me to go to ATIX this year and ask them to give a status update on Debian content because I was seeing so many people were looking for information about Debian content management that um, then Quirin gave an update at our former birthday party and that that need of the community was kind of patched with that. So it's that's super, super nice. Um, and also like, you know, there is this concern in terms of barrier of entry. We can, you can auth authenticate via a range of options. Like there's loads of things I haven't enabled, but at the moment um, you can authenticate via your GitHub account and also via your Gmail. So it's super nice like that. And also it's, it's really, really easy once things are set up properly um, to be an email only follower of Pulp updates so like you can just get the release announcements if you want or you can get the development discussions just if you're in just say if you're not a core pulp engineer for example you just want to keep up to, it's easy to keep up to date um and it's easy to just click it and join the conversation from there and ideally it'll be easy to you know in time we'll have the reply by email thing set up and that will also be good um, so just in terms of the remaining challenges that I can see, um, we're in limbo at the moment and it's never nice to be in limbo. Um, we were warned in the beginning that um, we are the first community that OSCI are I hope I got that acronym right. Actually, I didn't even check. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. I was I just got a bit frightened there when I looked at it. So basically, they have offered to provide support um, to to um, st uh, to, to um, spin it up for us, but they warned us that we're their guinea we're their guinea pigs. Like we are the first community that they're doing this for, and um, it has slowed us down a little bit because um, you know things are going down. We have to report it to them. They fix it, and then something else goes down. So so it's still a bit um, ropey. And um, we've asked them then for some feature enhancements, like I've asked for an, an events page and I've asked for a reply via email. And these things are like, they're not trivial to implement. So we just have to wait for that. Uh, so I will say though, that um, once this is up and running, like from a day-to-day -day perspective in the Foreman community, I don't have, I don't encounter issues with uh, the stability of discourse. I don't encounter major maintenance issues, things like this. I think once it's up, it will be up and that's it. And um, we can retire our mailing list as a backup. Um, so yeah, uh, in terms of then matrix, one thing that I have identified that we are still missing is meeting bot. I attended um, Ansible Contributor Summit just to get a look at what they were going to be doing and um, they are using one via Libra chat actually uh, integration so if we wanted something like that I can go look for it and um, they are, I think they are planning to write their own bots for meeting minutes for things like that so we can um, just take theirs or perhaps maybe even create our own and um, offer them up to the wider matrix community and I know that like there are there are bridging issues you know um, there are outages, things aren't absolutely perfect, but at the same time, like GitHub goes down, GitHub Actions goes down, almost everything goes down, like like Facebook went down a few weeks ago. It's, it's all, in my opinion, it's all in the game. And I do think that they're becoming less and less of a daily issue, more and more maybe of a weekly or a, a monthly issue. So I think, unless I'm missing something, I think that's, this is kind of the pain of a 
of a FOSS service, shall we say. Um, so yeah, that is everything from me. I want to know. I want to know now what you what you all think about this. So yeah, first of all, thank you for the um, uh, for for putting this together on my request. Um, you you use the term central when you refer to matrix. I think we should say that the protocol itself is a distributed one. But what oh, yeah. we want central point of uh, our our rooms should be the central discussion point for Paul. Thank you. That's what I meant. That's certainly what I meant. Thank you very much for the clarification. Yeah. So if we do, you know, if we want to, if we wanted to set up like a Telegram channel, something like that, we could we could centralize it using Matrix protocol as well, um, some kind of bridge. So how has there has there been any perceivable change for any of you over the the last while in in our kind of community? communications like is anything have you have you noticed anything from day to day um i agree that metrics improved um i guess reduced uh friction for users to join and uh, we see i think we see more um, folks there and more communication and also discourse or and previously github discussions it also definitely noticeable that it's uh, more people are talking there in comparison to mailing lists and um that's great tanya um i'm glad that you're positive about it um in terms of discourse do any of you find it difficult is there any difficulty around that do you think that there's any disadvantage compared to the the mailing list i don't think we had a like a team-wide chat about this at any point like how what are what are your feelings about it um, yeah first of all uh you still need to sign up to comment on anything but it's a low barrier and uh, it may be good to, that you need to sign up because that kind of makes you responsible for what you write and it makes it easier to, um, to moderate. Um, I've used the discourse uh, for the Foreman project as you and so I was kind of familiar with the interface and I really like it personally. Cool. Uh, it it seemed like maybe for the brief period where we used GitHub discussions, there was a little bit more engagement, but I don't know if we have enough data to actually like say that for sure. Um, could just be a coincidence, and that's just my feeling. Other people might not even agree. There was something, Daniel. There was like a a magic rush during those few weeks we were on. GitHub, it did, it did feel more active. It did feel, it did feel like something was changing. If I'm honest, um, and in terms of authentication, um, Matthias, the you should be able to go via your GitHub account, or via your, you know, a, a Google account, um, or whatever other integration that you would like. So hopefully, that's a bit less. Burdensome. Than I think it's a lot easier than the old mailing list. And again, I think it's still valid and good that you need to sign up somehow. So you are responsible for your own postings. It's the same. I suppose it's the same with with most things these days. And if you think it was pretty much the same with um, like even for HackMD, like you can't you can't edit anything unless you have signed in via somehow so i suppose it's it's safety and even like you know yesterday i closed off the stream and immediately we started to see spam on on youtube so it's kind of i suppose we're a little bit protected but we're not um overly 
you know, we're not overly bothered. There, there are, just say with Matrix, there are tons of other tools that we could use, like tons of other bots for like community management. But to date, I haven't seen any need for any of them. Like, for example, there's, um, there's a blacklisted accounts bot, I think, that we could bring in that um, there's, so if other communities, like I think the Fedora community are using it, and if they, if they identify people as um, breaking their code of conduct, they can flag it. And then that person is also like unable to speak within our channel if we were to add it. But I haven't seen, I haven't seen any violations of our code of conduct um, over on this side. Also on Foreman, I don't see in general things get, things haven't been heated for, for some time, thankfully. So I haven't, I would, I would do something like that if there was a need for it, but there hasn't been really spam issues either. And we did, we did have them from time to time in the past. So yeah, now as I far as, okay, go ahead. I was going to say, I would agree with the get. You're gone. Robin, you oh, we lost it. you, Robin. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I did agree that the GitHub discussions did have more um, activity, but I think the trade-offs and the fact that um, just the repo organization is just too large. So if we were a smaller, you know, project, I think that would be ideal. But I think given how unwieldy it was, it just was, a, mm. it just was kind of a, it's, a, it's just a, you know, showstopper with that. Um, so I think this is a good kind of balance and hopefully um, moving over to GitHub issues should help kind of, you know, help, help out with that visibility there. Go ahead, Grant. I was going to say, as far as, as uh, discourse goes, my biggest stumbling block with discourse, quite frankly, is entirely self-inflicted. It's inertia. And because we're still kind of straddling the line, we haven't really closed the mailing lists. And so we will put things up in discourse and then send out an email to point to it to make sure we catch everybody. It's really easy to not make the final break and just stop looking at the mailing lists and only look at discourse. Um, so that that certainly is a thing and i'm sure i'm not the only person that's having that problem but other than that it's just i have to re other than getting over the all oh, right i have to i have to go look and see what's going on on discourse um and prefer that as opposed to sending email to people um i like all of the the um like just like the overview information that you can get from discourse where you can see, oh, there's been this many responses to this thread and this many views is important because in a mailing list, I can tell who replies and I have no idea if anybody's actually looking at it. Whereas in discourse, I can say, wow, there's a lot of attention being paid to this, even though nobody has anything to say, which is important for for the for a whole class of, of threads. So um, I think once we get out of the halfway points, it'll be, it'll it'll pick up even more because inertia is a thing and if you're used to being on the mailing list and you don't absolutely have to move then you're not going to move for a while a hundred percent and it'll it'll be a bit so the the move to matrix happened because because freenode was a dumpster fire and libra wasn't quite ready yet and it was like well we can do this and we had to and everybody moved at once and i think that contributed to it, it being as successful as it was when we get there with the discourse i think it'll be it'll pick up as well. Yeah, once I'm going to, I was chatting with David Davis yesterday and um, I got feel, just say the the duck and misc, like we're, we're onto them usually once a week over something. And I don't want to be like, I don't want to flood them with requests, but certainly after this, I will ask them about our, I think they have to set up a mail server for us for the reply by email. And I think that once that is done, I think we can we can cut the cord and go. Um, yeah, I think it would be nice. I, I think it would be good. Are there any, I realize we're kind of at time. Is there any other questions, comments? If not, okay, thank you very much. Hope this made sense.